analytical approach, clarity in thinking, and a systematic analysis. Or put all the things that you have seen, you have elicited, put them together, analyze, and to say. As I told you, your aim is to qualify, not necessarily to talk. Please understand at every level that the examiners are friends and not foes. So definitely all the examiners are coming with an intention to help you out to see how best to elicit what you know. None of the examiners, or at least most of us, most of us, don't try to see what you don't know. We are not here to expose what you don't know. We are just giving an opportunity to tell what you know. So concentrate on that and do well. Please understand, what you say is important, but how you convey is more important. I think like Burunda Sitaram was telling last time, it's not just, a communication is not just a language of English that you're going to talk. It's about how you convey. Your unwritten body language, unspoken language, the way you convey it, the facial expression, your hand gestures, and the way you speak, the tone of your speech, all of them matter. So basically, it's a question of communication skills. So it may be not too, uh, it may be too late for you to say, okay, okay, I'm not going to do a communication first. You don't need to, okay? But all I'm saying is, please understand, it's not the grammar or language is important, but it's the unspoken language. But the most important insurance for you to succeed is to be honest and earnest, because there's no substitute for this. If you're honest, if you're earnest, for example, if you made a mistake, you say, sir, sorry, sir, I made a mistake here. I should have done this. I have not done it. It is far more applicable. Your language is not important. Your grammar is not important. But what is important is how comfortable and how you are able to convey what you know. The structure of the practicals, like most of us know, consists of a long case. There are three short cases. Then there's the YO verse, which generally have two sections of uh, exercise and specimens on one side, instruments and procedures on the other side. Most of the times in the general uh, physical exams, we have a ward rounds, but this time we're going to have most likely a OSCE if you don't have sufficient cases, but we don't know. It all depends on the day of the exams, about the number of cases that we have, the preferences of the examiners, as well as the MC inspector who is going to come either physically or online, we don't know. Like I was telling you all three guys yesterday, this time is going to be a very unique experience for all of us because it's going to be held in a very uh, different atmosphere because uh, uh, there's going to be COVID atmosphere, social distancing, physical distancing, case scenarios, and somebody coming online, somebody is watching you, all those things will happen. But I am trying my level best to, to make sure that none of them is going to affect the flow of thought and presentations for you guys. So as far as I am concerned, I am going to erect a curtain on one side to make sure that the candidate is completely insulated along with the examiners. As I told, since I am going to be the host, I will be asking the least amount of questions. I am going to be more a facilitator for the other examiners to ask questions and to evaluate. Of course, if things are going out of control, I will be there to damage control. But I am sure that you are not going to allow me to come to that situation. Coming to each one of them, long case is like a test match. Okay, it's the best opportunity to showcase yourself. That's the reason for which we're making sure that you're going to get a long case physical this time. And it's not going to be a virtual case because this is a time that you can see for yourself and you can present yourself. So it's like a long case. It has got a lot of opportunities to make a good impression. You can start it accordingly. You can duck some balls, you can leave some balls, you can analyze. And even if you make one or two mistakes, you can always come back. So you take your time for a long case and play to your study. This is very important that you have to play to your strength. Each one's strength is different. Somebody's strength is a uh, good language. Somebody's presentation is about skills. Somebody's about eliciting clinical science. So make sure that you play to your strength. Here is not the time, as in a test match, to worry about the run rate. You don't need to rapidly tell. You don't need to be fast. When you ask a question, you can think about it, answer. Generally, it's a long case which sets a tone for the whole match, whole uh, exams. And treat it like a test match. Be prepared, be ready, but take your time, take your guard, think but do well it has got a lot of opportunities and your best impression is going to be a long case because this is the time that you get maximum time for yourself to prove when you give a long case remember history uh, it's very evident history means his story that is they're trying to give a story it should be smooth and clear that's all how to make it smooth and clear simple remember that you are narrating the history to a person who does not know anything about or an examiner closing his or her eyes, they should be able to visualize what you're talking. And you have the liberty because nobody is trying to tell you something. You can build up a diagnosis through that itself. Most of the examiners, we tend to 
uh, form or mental impression the way you are presenting a case about what the case is likely to be. For example, you say that uh, uh, this is a child who presented, this is a three-year-old three, three year old child who was presented with a painless mass which is noticed by the parents about three months back and is gradually growing in size, etc. So, we just visualize it as we go by. So, use the sentences to build up a proper story, build into it carefully about the things that you would like to add for your, uh, the features that is going to help you to make up a diagnosis, one, salient negative points, two, three, make sure that you are going to be smooth enough to tell what is necessary. Generally, when you are talking, use the pauses in such a way that you can cluster things. When you say, like there is no history of flushing that's in the diary, etc. You are saying that, okay, I am going to convey that I am asking history of paraneoplasty syndrome. Okay, so no history of a febrile urinary tract infection, no history of an explained fear, etc. You cluster them together so that they know what you are talking about. Two. Three, most important, make sure that you don't dawdle. You know what you told, what you don't tell. They are not asking you to fill up a template. You know have a template, you are going to present. In case you miss out something, don't worry, just move ahead, move ahead. So, if you are going to be a, a, a hesitant there, say for example, I am talking, now uh, sir, uh, I, 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 I want to tell. So, basically you are giving time for them to think and pounce on you for a question. On the other hand, say for example, now I am speaking smoothly. So, there is no chance for you fellows to interrupt. No human being will normally interrupt somebody who is speaking fluently. Okay. So, make sure that when you are talking, you speak fluently and in case you miss something, don't bother. It's okay. Just move on. Just move on. Make a simple description. Avoid medical terminology. For example, sir, this is a patient who was taken, uh, was diagnosed with hemangioma and was taken on oral propranolol or beta. Don't use those terms. You sometimes a parents may tell you, parents may be over smart and tell you, but still it's generally better to avoid medical terminology. Because here you are at a level of just history, just use to avoid medical terminology. Always make it a point to put a relevant negative. Why I am putting it? Relevant is. I think people put in elaborate too many things, you don't need to, okay. So, put the relevant negative history so that you are clearly telling us that you are looked for these things and you asked for it and it is not there. Again, when you are talking about the examination patients, you have your own structure. I think I have told you repeatedly that I, each one has got a different way. All that is told to you by your DAS's clinical methods is that elaborate system just to make sure that you don't miss out anything. But this is not necessary. This is not necessary that you are going to. Uh, this is not necessary that you are going to uh, uh, say everything. You don't need to. Okay. So just uh, uh, go systematically in the same way. Okay. And again, I don't like it to be categorized, sir. Uh, uh, on physical examination, sir. On abdominal examination, sir. You don't need to. Or you can say, sir. You can go ahead. On inspection, help, help. It is fine. If you are comfortable talking, talk. It's so. Cover everything, but highlight salient points. Like I tell, if you listen to my talk, I am highlighting certain things, I am leaving some time for you to grasp. So, if you can use this sort of what I call as a pregnant pauses, you can utilize the pauses effectively. This is also a method of communication. You have to tell that relevant negative points very clearly. Okay. Don't dwell on your weakness. I am repeatedly stressing this. In general, human mind tends to stick to negativity. Human mind tends to bring out things which you are afraid of. For example, if you have got a lump, you are not too sure it is palatable or bilaterally palpable. If it keeps on thinking about it repeatedly, you are going to blurt it out and you are going to ask, get hammered in it. Don't need to. So, clear about what it is and say something and be clear. Don't invite trouble. As I told, don't say something which you cannot justify. Don't say something which you have not seen or convinced. Don't invite trouble. Because many times, as I told, it all depends on how you end this sentence that the next question comes. So, if you end a question with something you know well, very likely that the next question is going to be on that. On the other hand, you say something which you don't know, then you will come back. For example, sir, this child's uh, uh, weight is 4.4 kg, sir. Uh, I don't know the what uh, the age should be. Then the next question is going to be on that. On the other hand, if I confidently say, sir, this is by 95th percentile, then they are going to say, how do you know about 95th percentile? So, it's a question of, that's where I said it's a battle of wits, a game of wits. Okay. So, actually, if you are smart enough, if you are cool, if you are comfortable, if you have presence of mind, if you have enough command on the language, in fact, you can dictate the examiners how to take the next question forward. But anyway, that is it, the next level. That is not our interest. But most important point is, don't invite trouble.
by blurting out things about which you do not know. Clear. When you say diagnosis, we don't require a firm diagnosis in all cases. All we are looking for is a clinical impression. When you say clinical impression, that means based on the history, based on the clinical findings, this is the impression I have come up to. Try to make a complete diagnosis. I think I have told you earlier because many examiners prefer that. But don't try to be over smart. For example, say this is a child with anorectal malformation with status or status sigmoid colostomy, probably intermediate level or a rectobulbar level for which every sentence you should be able to justify. However, you don't need to compulsively look for a complete diagnosis where you don't have too much. Okay, so basically give a complete diagnosis, give a clinical impression basically based on what you have found so far. It may turn out to be something else we are not bothered, but your clinical impression is what we are looking for. Then be ready with a differential diagnosis. Generally when they ask a differential diagnosis, so be ready with a set of differential diagnosis and be ready to analyze. When you put a list of differential diagnosis, put a list based on the probabilities. Or the possibilities are 1, 2, 3. Rare possibilities are this. When they say, can it be this? Yes, it is possible, sir, but it is low now. And whenever you are talking about, uh, this is a level where most of the times, uh, all the examiners and all the examinees also will get to talk about, discuss about this, about analysis. Why do you say this? Why not this? Why not this? This is going to be a core area. So for which be prepared, when you are preparing yourself to come to the present the case. So, be clear in your mind that you are going to say this is a retroperitoneal mass, possibly of renal origin. I would keep in mind first possibility of a Wilms tumor, second possibility of a neuroblast. It's okay. Or somebody is very clear that it is a renal mass, okay, no problem. Okay, if you are convinced, sir, this is a renal neoplasm on the right side with no evident metastasis, clinically evident metastasis. So I feel it is a Willem tumor given the age, fair enough. But again, no force, don't say something which you are not convinced. For example, I can get away with it by saying no clinically evident metastasis. If you are not comfortable, don't talk, that's okay. That's what I am saying, play with your strength. You will be able to analyze. During discussions, what we look for is many times there is a prejudice. That's exactly the reason for which I am telling, don't ask for the diagnosis from the expert assist. They will be your juniors, they may be your seniors, all of them are well wishes, 100 percent, but don't ask for the diagnosis. You may get into problem. For example, for me in my DNB exams, uh, somebody came up and said, sir, uh, this is a case of uh, RV fistula. So I thought it is a rectovestibular fistula. Presented that way. Finally, it turned out to be rectovaginal fistula and Dr. M.M. Reddy, who had operated the case, was the exam. Luckily, I could get away with it, saying that, sir, there's a, uh, there's a little blood stain, I couldn't see, I could see history, etc. I got away with it, but it required a lot of time to get away. Problems. On the other hand, in my MCH exams, uh, I think Rasiksha was the expert assistant and Jasmeet was there. They tried to tell me that's a case of hamartoma, this is what we fed into the examiner. But on the other hand, I felt it as a hemagema because the central lesion, I could see something. So I presented something which is different to what was fed to the examiner. They came and saw, they co uh, concurred with me and finally ended up getting a medal. So what I am saying is, it's better not to be prejudiced by the diagnosis given by somebody. One, what we are looking for is a clinical approach. We don't need to be dogmatic. So we are not bothered about the final diagnosis being right or wrong. But if your approach systematically and if your logical analysis is right, you are happy. Your tips are very clear that you have to be assertive in your exams uh, when you are speaking, but not abrasive. For example, you say, sir, I sincerely, I mean, or rather I feel this is a case of Wilms tumor, sir. On the other hand, no sir, this can't be anything else. This has to be Wilms tumor. No, you don't need to be irritant at all. So make sure that you are not abrasive, but you are assertive. Similarly, you have to be confident, but not arrogant. Looks as a tall order, but not. When people ask, ask answer to the point, particularly the Sridhar, they have an issue, okay? So when they ask, you don't put a Google search in your mind, okay? They say, what do you think are possibilities? You say, sir, I feel one, two, three. Why do you think it is not there? It is not there because one, two, three. Answer to the point. Many people are so eager to answer the next question. For example, if they say, Balotability. So they think the next question is likely to be that it can be, so can something be bimanually palpable and balotable together? So they are trying to say that it is balotable but not bimanually. You get into the next question, one, you are thwarting the examiner, you are irritating him or her, and number three, you are, you are letting off a golden opportunity of the possible next question for which you know the answer. So just answer to the point. 
in general in the exams however much you go all of you will realize that last year when the other exam going fellows are answering questions many of you are in the behind the scenes you will realize that there is a strange air which engulfs only the examinee generally they become tongue tied they are really looking for schools i mean uh, clues they are looking forward for something they suddenly get tongue tied the tongues are dry the hands are palpitating this happens okay so relax it is okay okay everybody is in the uh, hall will be knowing what we are trying to drive at but finally some of that fellow may not be getting it so all you require to do is most of the times the other examiners are giving clues so just look for a clue most of the times we don't try to pull you down but generally we tend to give a clue okay just see if there is a clue which is being given as i told don't look for an intention behind a question because many times when they ask you some question you think they are trying to ask me because they are trying to imply me this and try to say something else and answer something else you get into a big mess don't be open to suggestions for example sometimes when you are really going wrong they say why do you think it can be a, a hemangioma why, why do you think it's a limbic cell lesion look be open to suggestion but not to be pliable if you're going to say yes it is possible this this is also possible that also we don't like so we need to be clear but at least be open to suggestions when people say okay it could be something there yeah. few general tips are that talk from your experience okay talk don't talk from what theoretically somebody has given please trust your seniors they have some wisdom too trust the wisdom of your seniors and what you have seen in the world even though sometimes what is given in the book may be different from what is being done there is a reason for it i'm sure you must have realized it if not ask your seniors to be convinced about why you did what you were not supposed to do or whatever whatever for example we don't do uh, the colostomy the way pinya describes we still do sigma loop colostomy we found enough reasons to do it we don't see any reason to switch over to the type of colostomy that uh, uh, pinya has described it is okay it's okay so you should know you should talk from your experience and most important is to justify what you say like you must have realized during your case presentations many times there are multiple approaches to the same anything is okay for example non functioning kidney you can offer a nephrectomy you can offer a pc and you can offer a double gst and you can offer a pyeloplasty it doesn't matter it depends on your philosophy it depends on how well you can justify it. for example you can say sir this is a 3 month old child even though the function is not there it is an obstructive pathology the dysplasmic elements are less likely to be there i would like to give a try either by means of a drainage or i will try to do a pyeloplasty because it gives a chance for the baby's kidneys to recover fine or you say i will give a trial of putting a stent or a pcn to wait for the uh, to see assess the functions improvement and i will talk to the parents and come back they accept it. or you say sir this is a vr dysplastic kidney has got a 0% function or a 5% function which is unlikely to improve and the child is already having repeated urinary infection back so i would prefer to go ahead and do an effective my spine even though i am giving complete classical straight jacketed diagnosis where Uh, the situations where the, uh, the management is an option many times you have gray area so it all depends on how you can justify what you say it doesn't matter okay so it depends on your philosophy as well as what you have seen and you say and uh, most of the examiners prefer to say that you we will counsel the parents will discuss and come back but however be ready with one more rider because in the fact of matter when you counsel the parents finally it all depends on how you counsel them you can counsel them to agree to a or b so be ready with another point saying okay give given a chance what would you prefer sometimes they may say okay i am the father now tell me what do you feel how we are going to counsel so be ready because i am sure all of you have counseled parents enough that you can get it so be able to justify what you say don't over complicate matter don't try to quote studies because if you quote one study somebody else may quote some other study sir according to a study conducted in 1995 Uh, only five percent of kidneys improve, or something. We don't want. Okay, don't overcomplicate. Don't try to do something more. Nobody likes over smart people. Smart likes are not appreciated. So, a simple, clear, sir, significant percentage, twenty percent, approximately ten percent. Okay, the twenty-one point eight percent will irritate people. You don't need to. Okay, because there are going to be other. So, don't overcomplicate. Don't overcoat. Similarly, always remember safety. first is important for example if you say i have got a child with hirschsprungs i will do a rectal biopsy to confirm the diagnosis before subjecting the child to colostomy is a perfectly acceptable answer okay for example i may not be willing to do a rectal biopsy if the clinical picture is classical x-ray picture is classical i may still go ahead but if a candidate says 
i would do a rectal biopsy to be a double sure i will not okay so always go for safety for example they say would you like to do one stage pull through for hirschsprung yes sir i have seen it being done however i am not comfortable doing it because i am not uh, uh, i am not comfortable doing sir i would still do a stage procedure is perfectly acceptable answer so safety of the patient is important then somebody saying gungo approach is saying sir no sir i will do one stage repair sir complications are negligible sir no we don't accept all right be aware of department protocols because even the examiners may be differing but most of the examiners 95% of the examiners will concur with you if you want to say what you have been practicing but if you don't know what you are practicing in the unit and you say something you are caught most of the time they ask the internal examiners we tend to ask the internal examiners what okay i mean what is it being followed okay do we say do we say customize for all patients somebody says no we do vesic customize acceptable somebody says we don't do vesic customize do you know, trust me acceptable it may be contradictory to what i see but if you are following what your department has done generally you got i mean this accepted it goes so be aware of your department protocols about what you do at each level there may always be a variation in a given case so don't make that exception the rule in a given case you want to think some consultant do something different but that is not the rule okay when it comes to short case it is just like an od match okay so here there is limited strains limited number of overs limited time to present limited times to make your impression but again very less chance for you to come back so if you make a mistake you are likely to pay dearly for it so think and take generally we tend to get three cases together so choose order of presentation make sure that the first case that you present is something which is simple straight forward but has got sufficient things to discuss okay keep controversial cases last for example if you have a dsd case keep it in the last because in any given dsd if there are four people there may be eight opinion okay in a management in a, a, any given case so better to keep the controversial cases last similarly keep very straight forward cases with much less for discussion also to the last for example if you given a case of an inguinal hernia umbilical hernia undescended testes okay keep them in the last because even though the diagnosis is straight forward there are two uh, less things to discuss so you don't know where the discussion will digress it may go to embryology it may go to Uh, some uh, CG, RP, etc. So don't go. So generally try to. It's a question of a uh, given day how to handle it. So make sure that you present the best of the short cases first, and the next, and the next. All these cases you should be ready for a, a brief history. So you should be able to elicit positive and the negative points to be taken. So if they ask you, okay, what is this case? You generally start off with history. But if the brushy or said, sir, no, I don't want this. You tell me the findings. Go ahead with the findings. As I told you, you have to play by the ball which comes. you can't have a premeditated approach to this okay describe the local findings accurately that is very important okay try to describe the accurately findings say sir this is a well circumscribed lesion on the left forearm measuring sound so and so on so whatever <coughs> and talk about relevant systemic examination but here you don't need to elaborate say about sir the height is this and weight is this unless that is relevant to the case let it be discussed generally we uh, here is not the time we ask you clinical impression because most of the times in a short case diagnosis is very straight forward so we ask you the diagnosis be ready to say so this is a case of hemangioma or lymphangioma again as i told beware of your terminology if you want to use whatever classification you should be clear about your terminology and use it don't play a football match like hemangioma what type of hemangioma okay this is involuting type no sir this whatever so be clear about your terminology such as and basically we will ask you about approach we will not be too elaborate about Okay, for example, you say, "I may give up." What will you choose? They may ask you about propranolol. Okay, a trial of propranolol. They may ask you the dose. Okay, so why don't you do that? You should be able to tell. Or why not the? Why don't you wait and watch? So you should be able to tell. So generally, we look at the approach to take. As compared to the other two, viva voce or the tables is like a T20. Okay, we are short of time, running through. So your technique preparation helps you, but how do you face each ball? Is what is matter because you may not have. Sufficient balls to face, but you just have to finish it. So sometimes it may be T20, sometimes it may be T10, sometimes maybe it may be a super over. So it depends on your luck as well as the time of the day in which it is happening. A lot of time constraints are here. So in a viva voce, you should have quick thinking. Quick thinking and thinking on the stage is important. You need to adapt to the situations. As I told, uh, we'll come back at each level that you have to come where you need to adapt. 
So, and you should have a short pointed answers and don't waste time. Don't be elaborate. Don't say anything necessary. When it comes to X-ray, first identify the X-ray or the procedure. For example, which is very obvious. For example, sir, this is a warding phase of a maturity cystic of time. Or this is a plain X-ray of the chest and abdomen of a newborn. This is an IVP of a child. Okay, so tell clearly of that so that sets the tone. See, think about uh, five minutes. Uh, anyway, X-rays are there. Think for a minute and then answer it. First. Then describe the findings systematically. Don't fit a diagnosis because most of us, with one or two glances, we will be able to get a diagnosis. So don't fit the findings to your uh, what you call the diagnosis. For example, if you see a case of CLE, don't fit in say, sir, I see hyperinflated lung with the sparse lung margin, with the compressed lung, with mediastinal shift and lung expansion, no, 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 if you put that way that we know that you know the diagnosis, all right, you have seen the x-ray, you are not interested. On the other hand, you systematically describe the findings. So this is a plain x-ray of the chest, PA view, and systematically go through in a system, just listen to what I am going to say. So this is a plain x-ray of the chest uh, of a child, uh, the visualized bony cage is normal, centering is normal, the spine appears normal, the heart the, is in the center, it looks okay and uh, there seems to be a hyperleucine in the left upper chest and uh, it looks like uh, a hyperinflated lung with sparse lung margins. There is no lung collapsed lung margin seen, the diaphragm seen. So if you go systematically, one, you are leading to a diagnosis. Most important, you are conveying to the examiner that you are going systematically. This is what we like. We don't interest in the diagnosis. Don't jump to the diagnosis. All right. Because you state your clinical impression. So finally, they ask you what it is, sir. This shows hyperinflated lung with mediastinal shift with sparse lung margins. So, so most likely, this looks like a unilever emphysema affecting the left upper lobe. Clear? First class. Okay. And then the elaborate probable diagnosis. Then they ask you what is what next will you do? B pointed answers. Okay. Here is a question of like I told, it is going to be T20 or even T20 or T5 or super over. I don't know. Whatever comes, take it and go ahead. So face it as it comes. So what is the next question? What is the investigation? What will you do? What will you avoid? So generally that is how the questions will be. A pointed question, pointed answer. What you will avoid in a CLE? It will be ready to answer. So I am going to avoid preoperative bronchoscopy. That way. All right. Specimen is actually a difficult one, especially if it is a hardcore specimen. Because it is already firm line fixed for a long time, so it will be difficult. Most of the examiners we tend to keep which is straightforward. However, it may be something which may be difficult to identify. So take time to study before you answer. Look at all the structures and take. Apply in your mind, run in your mind, what could be the procedure by which they have taken. One. Number two, when they ask, describe the specimen. Okay, don't come to a diagnosis. So you say, okay, this is a cut margin of what looks like a kidney. And there seems to be sort of exophytic mass arising from the lower pole. I can see the ureter and the vessels being clipped in separate. So what I am saying that. So, when you ask about it, you say offer possible diagnosis because most of the times it may not be very, very clear unless it's a hydrated cyst or maybe something which is liver mass, something may be so. Maybe. One common question of some examiners are whether it's anti mortem or post mortem. Simple thing if whatever specimen you see is the treatment, it is anti mortem. So what you see is not the treatment, it is post mortem. For example, a PU valves, you see both the kidneys and ureters, that's not the treatment of choice, so it is post mortem. On the other hand, you see Wilms tumor specimen, it is an anti mortem. Again, Brief answers. So generally they ask you only one or two questions related to this and move on. So be ready to give brief answers to brief questions. When it comes to instruments, describe the instrument. You say, sir, this and generally avoid to use loose terms. For example, uh, sir, this is artery forceps. No. Instead you say, sir, this is Spencer well hemostrate. Curved hemostrate. Straight hemostrate. Okay. So it will make a difference. If you can make it. If you don't, don't look for it. Don't look for it. Okay. For example, for me, you say mosquito forceps is far better than you. Uh, struggling around for five minutes and say something which is not relevant, then you get it. Use opponents, that means the names of people, if you are very sure about, like I said, Alstead, Cocker's clamp, Ikeda clamp, something, something. If you can tell clearly, use those opponents. If you are not too sure, don't need to say. Generally, they ask you about the functions and uses. Say, sir, this is used to grasp the soft tissues, so this is able to take this thing, this is helping, etc. They are going to ask. Then they will ask you about surgeries when they are asked. Sir, I have seen it being used in. Yes, I have used, seen it being used for dissecting, uh, dissecting the organs, for blend dissection, for uh, 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 hemostasis, for uh, marking results, for crushing things, whatever, whatever, okay. They may ask you what are the typical surgeries, so be ready in your mind when they say where have you seen it being used or they may ask you where have you seen it. 
So be ready. For example, it's a phenocytoid retina. So I have seen it for lung surgery in newborn case. The common cases that you have seen is esophageal atresia. Sometimes I've seen about uh, uh, lower emphasis or whatever you've seen, be ready to say. Generally, there will be scopes, cystoscope, receptoscope, bronchoscopes. So generally, they will be watching how you handle the scopes. Make sure that you can't handle the scopes well. Don't be rough. I'm sure your mind is deviated because of the exams. Many places we keep a damaged scope if available on the day. But sometimes it is not available. We may keep the actual scope and the host examiner will be watching this trepidation, how you handle it. So make sure that you're going to handle the scopes clean, carefully. And when you're having a scope in a hand, don't handle anything else. Handle it separate, keep it separate and come. When you say about operative procedures, be ready to say standard operations. Okay. Be ready with one operation. The reason why I'm saying is, um, this is why I'm saying is, uh, be ready with one operation. Many times they ask you, okay, leave this chips. Okay, tell me an operation which you like. Tell me an operation which you enjoyed most. Or sometimes we ask, okay, what is the last case that you have assisted? Or what is the last case that you have done? Or what is the last case that you enjoy most? So be ready with something. For example, it may be sewage electricity, it may be angular or emphysema. It can be pyeloplasty, something, something, very clear. So choose something which is simple, straightforward, clear, descriptive. Keep as a backup. So if they ask, you don't need to think, you can let it out straight away. What we look for is a smooth flow. Smooth flow. Don't hold back. If you miss out something, don't mentally look back. Because as I told, most of the examiners by the time are tallying your exams as your fate is sealed or your seat is failed. Either way, the time is over. So most of the times they'll be looking at the... Uh, either drinking coffee or having biscuits or maybe writing things and paperwork and maybe only one or two examiners will be asking you questions. So all you require to do is to not to digress them, give a smooth flow. In case if you missed out one step, please go ahead. Unless they ask you back, don't need to. Choose a scenario if given a choice. That means if they say Hirschsprung's disease, you say, sir, I am going to describe a Duhamel procedure in a 10th month old child with a colostomy already done. A recto sigmoid Hirschsprung's disease with a colostomy. Then you start. Or you say, I am going to describe uh, open pyeloplasty for a three year old child with an obstructed system on the left side. Fine enough. Okay. So, what happens is you are giving with a version, so you are setting the tone, and then the questions will be confirmed. If they give a choice, if they don't give, you have no other choice. Let go. Always, like I say, for an operative procedure, be ready with a three version. First version is going to be an elaborate procedure. Okay. Where you are going to be ready. For example, the child under general anesthesia, he is playing this in the prone jackknife position with adequate padding to protect the femoral nerves and uh, the buttocks are spread apart and then uh, the cotton plate is applied and then the paper parts are painted and draped and drapes are held in position by means of the stitch, whatever you can say, and then the position is marked. Be ready to talk. But most of the times you don't have this much version to be present. They may say, boss, tell me quick. So we should be ready to say, cut down all the frills and come back to say, sir, the patient is placed, the child is catheterized in the play and placed in the prone jackknife knife, so the jackknife position with adequate padding. After adequate parts of draping and painting and draping, a midline incision is taken from so on, so from the tip of coccyx to the place. What, so what I'm saying is be ready with the second version. Sometimes we may ask be asked about third version. Third version in the sense, okay, tell me the salient steps of PSRP. So in that case, you should be ready. You should be able to say, or what are the principles of PSR? You should be able to say the strict midline approach, identification of the muscle complex, dissection, careful dissection between the recto, uh, rectum and the urethra, adequate mobilization, avoiding dissection of the lateral wall, adequate mobilization, reconstruction of the levator in a, and centering using the muscle complex and suture. We saw within a matter of one minute, I was able to give you the gist of PSR. Similarly, it can be about pyeloplasty, it can be on anything. Be ready with the third version if they ask. Other thing which you have to be ready when you are talking about operative procedures is about difficult steps or complications. They may say, okay, of all the things, which is the most difficult step or which is the crucial step in an operation? For example, in this, the dissection between the rectum and the urethra maybe. So you should be thinking about it and keep it ready so you don't need to start thinking that time. Okay, be prepared about the difficult step. Or you may say, a complication. Okay, when you are doing a PSRP, you can see an excess amount of blood coming. So what do you think you have damaged? Or what are the complications you can find at this stage? Short complication, lot of. Be ready with it. So it all depends on how things go. Basically, in a, an OSCE, it's going to be a, a scenario will be put up and then about a case and then we're going to ask you about questions. What do you think has gone wrong? What are the options? What do you think uh, can be done? What are the problems? Whatever, there'll be four or five questions for each one of them. 
for each question that you answer you get a specific number of marks so it is objective so in general we will be giving actual cases so we will not be giving something completely scenario uh, somewhere so we're going to take about case scenarios in which we're going to give actual cases where here the emphasis is not about the diagnosis or presentation so don't delve into it but it's about management issues so generally about the post post operative so most of the times whether it is actual ward rounds or ASCII a case case it is already provided for example this is a child with a PUJ documented uh, drop in function pyeloplasty done three days back as a persistent urine leak now how you manage or this is a case of choridocolcyst type 1 operated five days back as by leak which is coming out how do you manage or cholangitis how do you handle it so the questions will be actual cases generally we talk about post-operative management and issues in the post-operative so the discussion will be about management issues so basically take time to analyze and answer okay and uh, you don't need to say anything exotic as i told earlier talk from your experience i'm sure all of you have seen enough cases you've done enough cases and you've seen enough complication from all of us so i think you should tell from your clinical experience about how will you handle it last section i would like to again because all of us are obsessed about cricket i would like to draw enough parallels between cricket and air exams finally it's all after all all about cricket okay just like in cricket you require a lot of preparation remember in a cricket match it requires a lot of preparation it requires remember all the rcbs and all the ipl teams have already landed in uh, gulf for practicing for the last three weeks they also had some camp before going in but despite all these things what is a test is it's a test of mental toughness and physical endurance so i'm sure you require it because you require mental toughness for the exams otherwise you're going to wilt it's going to be very stressful okay let me uh, tell you very clearly that it is quite stressful you require to be physically endurance also so that's the reason for which i'm going to tell all of you please sleep well before coming don't be tired i will breakfast okay so it requires a lot of preparation but it is a test of your mental toughness and physical endurance talent matters talent definitely matters no question but practice matters more that's what is the difference between Sachin Tendulkar and Rahul Dravid. You, all of us can't be Tendulkars, but all of us can be Dravids. Okay, it requires just a patience, perseverance, and putting a lot of practice. So, some people are endowed better, but doesn't matter. What we need to do is to make sure that we match the preparation. So, it will, uh, it involves a lot of preparation, and whatever may be the preparation, what it matters is the performance of the day, just like as in a cricket match. On the day, you do well, you may not well. Important is to play to your strength. You are not going to be playing away because each one's strength is different. And as I told, it's your strength which you have got in doubt. You know it better than others. Like last time I told about, you know about the quivers and the arrows in your quiver. Nobody else knows. So play to your strength. Match situations are different. Okay, every match is different. Australia is different from England, from India. Pitch and weather counts. No doubt. Okay. But what important is you don't have a choice on those things. Similarly, just like they on a given day, the situation of the COVID, you don't have a control. You don't have control on the examiner. You don't have a control on the case that is available that day. You don't have a control on the timing of the day. You don't have a control on the mood of the examiner or the mood of the uh, whatever the patient. So you don't know. All those things change, just like in a weather and uh, pitch and weather. But what matters most is your mental approach. Your what you perform beyond all these things is what is going to determine your true champion or not. Virat Kohli can hit a six, it is in India or England is what makes him different. So, make sure that your mental approach is better just like in cricket. Just in, like in cricket, you need to be calm and composed. You need to plan, you need to think how to do, but pray also. You have seen all the players including Virat Kohli play, pray apart from playing. So, be ready, be ready to do what it is. Just as in, in a, in a Cricket field, you study the field placement. Based on that, you can anticipate the ball. For example, you know the offside is uh, fully packed. You know that fellow is going to play an out swinger. If it is if slip cordon is heavily the same, you know he's going to pitch it up to you and he's going to slip the ball away. On the other hand, if he's going to be strengthening the leg side, you know that he's going to bowl on your leg. So you can anticipate the ball in a cricket by studying the field field place. Similarly, looking at the examiner, looking at the candidate, looking at the exams, looking at the case, yes, you can. Anticipate the ball. You can analyze, but most important is whatever may be the anticipated, the moment the ball is released, it may be different. It may be just a strategy for you to put a different way. So you can't do by what you predetermined to work, but you have to take it by the ball. After the ball is released, you have to think on your feet and you have to put the ball on its merit. No alternative.
it's again cricket because anticipate bouncers you will get bouncers one in same way but no bowler is allowed to bowl more than one bouncer over so you're not going to keep getting a barrage of bouncers you'll get one or two occasional but don't worry no bowler can consistently keep bowling bouncers similarly no examiners can consistently ask you confusing questions just like cricket please understand each ball is different don't worry if you have been beaten in this ball you may be thoroughly beaten all square sent you might have almost lost but you are not lost is okay if you dwell on this you will not be able to play the next ball that's what your bowler is trying to get you in cricket they basically beat you up twice or thrice to reduce your confidence okay and they play out swingers and those who play cricket will understand the next ball will be an incoming and you leave it and it will come and hit your pad or your wicket and you get out so sir, that is because the previous ball is still playing on your mind you should not the difference of rahul dravid or tendulkar is they are able to see each ball different and they play it on its merit similarly if you made a mistake don't take it forward it's okay you made a mistake carry on similarly don't get carried away if you hit a boundary you hit a four or six next ball you hit a ball uh, even if it is a good well pitched ball you may end up getting out so don't do that similarly there are different bowlers just like there are different bowlers there are different examiners too when there are some bowlers you know it is difficult you just have to play them out that's what cricketers do they they know the shoaib akhtar is unplayable today they somehow make sure that the best batsmen just defend their way and they attack the other fellow similarly you know that there is some examiner who is tough just answer and keep it right but at the next available opportunity when some other examiner software examiner come take it and do please remember match is not over till the last ball is bowled this is a favorite uh, quotation of ravi shastri but it is very true here so till the last question is asked the exam is not over so be prepared to present as i told a general other tip is please understand that it's a question of psychological warfare or i will say a game more than a warfare so choose a, the examiner who is more comfortable to you so some examiners are more encouraging so talk to them more don't neglect other people but begin your answer and end the answer with them so that they are encouraged to answer more questions look at the i and speak don't speak looking at somewhere else okay it more encouraging make sure that you going to make eye contact with all the examiners and as i told more make more eye contact and finish your answer with the examiner you are feeling most comfortable with all right so remember all it requires is to be cool as a captain whether it's mahendra singh dhoni or ramesh both of us are cool okay i would like to just say and by just saying best wishes to all i am certain that we have trained you well enough you are prepared well enough our motto is to provide you with strong shoulders and not a light burden so we have not made your exams easier but we have made you stronger and prepared we have all along all three years we have made the best trust us we have given our best we can't have given anything more with every year we feel that there is a best prepared batch so we feel the same for you maybe next year will be better than this but will not be worse than this so your job is to go and conquer if krishna paramatma is going to come and give you bhagavad gita today there is only one simple word just do it thank you very much i am open for questions comments discussions ram sir raju or whoever is there hello yes sir we can hear sir no on the presentation got over because it shows me that it is gone off but the entire presentation came yes sir everything came sir. okay fine so any questions comments suggestions i hope it is useful yes sir, sir yeah it was very good ramesh thank you very much even i learnt a lot from that <laughs> <laughs> but you have to give one more talk about how to face ex- life sir <laughs> life <laughs> no the thing is are they allowed to carry a clipboard and uh, paper yes, and sir. pen into the we exam? will give sir we will give sir okay. we will give we will give a clipboard Because and paper i i i urge the the candidates to make generous use of the clipboard and the um, papers because that gives you a lot of uh, you know uh, encouragement to put your thoughts in order so that is what i did uh, during my exams so yes, better is to write down all your uh, whatever you are thinking uh, into the paper yes you know uh, other than all the u- usual things history examination and all the all those things what are the points you think are important to be stressed you can write down on one side okay. and um, i think that helps a lot in boosting the confidence of the examinee if you have uh, one uh, clipboard and uh, pen in your hand because it makes you less nervous when you face an exam
very true as an extension please make sure that you write the salient points of your history and physical findings and your diagnosis and differential diagnosis because even if you miss out talking if you have written there on the paper it will come most of the examiners will allow you to have your clipboard and your uh, papers with you when you are presenting so don't worry yeah the grams and also yes sir also when you are when you are answering uh, you can write down what you are answering so that uh, you yeah. know you know how your flow of thoughts is so that makes you again more confident when you are answering if you write down what you are answering you can write down in abbreviated form also if you want yes. because the examiners don't insist on taking the paper from you they won't take it uh, but in uh, some universities you... they have the habit of uh, asking the examiner to write uh, about the particular uh, aspect of the like a long case or short case candidate wise on a sheet of paper and submit it to the university some universities yes. had it when i took the exam yes sir as a as a piece of evidence i don't know yes. how it is now no here what we do is we give the paper in which you are going to or actually there is a answer script from the university itself in which okay. they are supposed to enter the register number they are supposed to okay. sign they are supposed to fill up something it cannot be okay. blank okay okay uh, raju sauji now he left the meeting okay any other questions or suggestion from anybody otherwise we will wind up other thing is uh, you know uh, make yourself very pleasant in the sense that as uh, dr ramesh told uh, have a good breakfast your regular breakfast what you have preferably from home if it is possible otherwise from the hostel whatever food you normally eat shave nice shave properly so that you present yourself well groom your hair uh, you smell nice and uh, wear uh, you know nicely ironed clothes and uh, you should look nice when you go to the exam please wear a food that also gives you a lot of uh, yeah, it also sir. gives you a lot of uh, self assurance yes sir but you need to feel good about yourself before others yeah. feel good about you yeah anything else from anybody others will wind up the exam goes man come on see the yes. go contest yes thank you sir thank you sir okay we will try our best sir okay best of luck and do well yeah. don't worry i'm sure you're going all to all the best it. all the best to all of you and all i think you're talking sir enough toxic i think it's right time to go on just do it okay best of luck Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you.